Differentiation will. All right. What we're going to study in this video is differentiation rules. So those are extremely useful to evaluate the derivative of complicated functions without having to use the definition of derivatives. Okay, so we know how to define the derivative of a function that's given by the limit as h goes to zero of the difference quotient. And we've seen how we can use this definition to calculate the, the derivative of simple functions. But it was not easy. Like even for very simple functions like x squared or square root of x, there was quite a lot of calculations involved. Now, can you imagine how painful it would be to use this definition to calculate the derivative of, say, complicated rational functions? That would be pretty ugly. So we don't want to do that. I mean, this is a perfectly valid definition, but we don't want to have to use that every single time that we want to evaluate the derivative of a function. So what we'll do is basically prove a whole bunch of differentiation rules. So these are general rules, so we're going to prove them from the definition, but once they're proven, we can just use them to calculate the derivative of complicated functions. And that will be a lot, lot faster than using the, de the definition every single time. So the first rule that we're going to see is the power rule. And it is, in fact, the answer to the question that I asked you at the end of the previous video. So what the power rule is saying is that for any real number a, the derivative of the function x to the power of a is equal to a times x to the power of a minus 1. All right, so this is the statement of the power rule, a very important rule. How does it work in practice? Well, let's work out a few examples. So if I take the derivative of the function x squared, what the power rule is saying is that this should be equal to 2 times x to the 2 minus 1, which is just 2x, which is indeed what we calculated from the definition of the derivative previously. But see how much faster this is. This is way, way faster than using the definition. So that's great. Now you can also calculate, for example, the derivative of the square root function. This is the same as calculating the derivative of x to the power of 1 half. Then the power rule is saying that this should be 1 half times x to the power of 1 half minus 1, which is the same as 1 half times x to the power of minus 1 half, or in other words, 1 over 2 square root of x, which is again what we got from the definition. But this calculation was a lot faster. All right, but we still need to prove the power rule if we want to be able to use it. So how could we prove it from the definition of derivatives? Uh, well, it's actually easier to uh, consider uh, separate cases, so different cases depending on uh, what kind of a we have. So the easiest case is to look at a being a positive integer. And in this case, there's a number of different ways you can prove it. One of them is to use what's called the binomial theorem. It's a neat little proof, and it's actually done in the textbook, so if you're interested, you can look at this. Another approach is to use a proof by induction. Now, if you don't know what a proof by induction is, I strongly encourage you to look at Wikipedia, because proofs by induction are really, really cool. So in fact, here, there's a really nice application of induction to prove the power rule for positive integers. You can try it yourself. That's cool. All right, now if you, the next case would be to look at a being a negative integer, and it turns out that this is not too difficult. If you've proved it for positive integer, then you can prove it for all integers using the quotient rule, which we will see shortly. And finally, to prove it for arbitrary real numbers requires a little more work, and we don't right now have the tools to do it, but in a few weeks we'll be able to prove the power rule for arbitrary real numbers. All right, this is cool, but what if I give you the function for instance, 4 times x squared. How can I calculate the derivative of that function without having to use the definition? Well, we need one more rule. This one is called the constant multiple rule. And it turns out to be a pretty simple one. So what is this rule saying? Well, it is saying the following. If for any constant c and any differentiable function f of x, the derivative of c times the function f of x will be equal to c times the derivative of f of x. So in other words, you can pull out uh, the constant from the derivative. I'm not going to prove this rule here because it's pretty straightforward. You can look at the textbook, but it follows directly from the definition using the limit laws. So it's really not a complicated proof. Now, how does it work? Well, if I apply the constant multiple rule to uh, my example of function here, what it is saying is that the derivative of the function 4x squared well, the rule is saying I can pull out the constant, so I get 4 times the derivative 
of x squared. But then using the power rule, I can calculate the derivative of x squared. I'll get 2x, as we've shown above. So I end up with 8x as being the derivative of 4x squared. And note again how fast this was compared to using the definition of derivatives. All right, this is all very, very cool. But what if I give you the following function? 4x squared plus 2x. How can I calculate its derivative without using the definition of derivative? I need one more rule. This one is called the sum or difference rule. And this one as well is actually quite simple. So what it is saying is that for any two functions f of x and g of x that are differentiable, the derivative or the sum of the sum or difference of the two function is equal to the sum or difference of the derivatives. And this, the proof is also here pretty straightforward. Just from the definition of the derivative and using limit laws, it follows directly. So if I apply that to my function, what do I get? Well, what this is saying is that the derivative of f of x, which is 4x squared plus 2x, should be equal to the sum of the derivatives. So the derivative of 4x squared plus the derivative of 2x. Now for the first one, well, I could use the rules, but I've already calculated that. What I got was 8x. For the second one, I can use the constant multiple rule to pull the constant out. I get 2 times the derivative of x. But then the derivative of x is just 1 by the power rule, so I get 2. So in other words, the derivative of my function is just 8x plus 2. And again, that was all very fast. So that's great. Okay, so let me now make things a little more complicated. Consider the function x plus 2 times x plus 1. How can I calculate its derivative without using the definition of derivatives? Or more generally speaking, if I want to calculate the derivative of the product of two functions f of x and g of x, what is this? Well, looking at the sum rule, where the derivative of a sum was the sum of derivatives, you may be tempted to say that the derivative of the product here should be equal to the product of the derivatives. So derivative of x, f of x, times the derivative of g of x. Right? It makes sense, doesn't it? Well, no, 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 never, ever, ever do that. This is plain wrong. The derivative of a product is not equal to the product of derivatives. Never, ever make that mistake. All right, but what is it equal to then? Well, this is what is called the product rule. So what is this? Well, this is the statement that for any two functions f of x and g of x, the derivative of the product of the two functions will be equal to the first function f of x times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So it's a little more complicated. It's definitely not the product of uh, the derivative of the functions. Now, as far as the proof goes, well, the proof is actually quite interesting, and it's a little more complicated than the other rules. So I will do the proof at the end of this video. But for now, just take it for granted, and let's see how it works in practice. So let's try to apply that to our function. So I want to calculate the derivative of the product of two functions, namely x plus 2 times x plus 1. So using the product rule, I'll get the first function, so x plus 2 times the derivative of the second one, plus the second one times the derivative of the first one. And now I need to evaluate these derivatives. Well, here I'm going to use the sum rule, so this is the, the, the sum of the derivatives. So the derivative of x is just 1 by the power rule. And the derivative of 1, well, it follows from the power rule that the derivative of any constant is always 0. right? So the derivative of 1 is going to be 0. So for the second term, I get x plus 1, and again, I use the sum rule. Then the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of a constant is 0. So what do I get? I get x plus 2 plus x plus 1, or in other words, 2x plus 3. Okay, and in fact, it turns out that for that function, we could have done, uh, we could have taken the derivative in a different way. So let me show you how you could have done it, and then we'll see that we get the same answer. So what you could have done is realize that in fact, well, you have a product here, but you can certainly expand the product. And then what, what would you get? Well, you get x squared 
plus 2x plus 1x, so that gives plus 3x plus 2. And so once, once you've done that, then you can calculate the derivative without having to use the product rule, right? Because the derivative of the function is just going to be the derivative of this expression, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then I just need to use the sum rule and the product rule to calculate it. So the sum rule tells me that this is the sum of the derivative. And then I just evaluate the derivatives term by term. So the derivative of x squared gives me 2x. Derivative, derivative of 3x, I first use the constant multiple rule to pull, pull the 3 out. And then derivative of x is 1, so I get 3. And derivative of constant is 0. So I end up with 2x plus 3, which is indeed the same thing that I got before. So that happens pretty often, that you can evaluate a derivative in different ways, and that's fine. They will always give you the same answer, because all these rules are uh, consistent. Now, one thing you should note is that this is definitely not the derivative, uh, the product of the derivatives. right? If your function is x plus 2 and times x plus 1, well, if you were to take the, deriv uh, the, the product of the derivative, well, the derivative of x plus 2 is 1, derivative of x plus 1 is 1, so the product of the derivatives would be 1, which is definitely not equal to 2x plus 3. So again, never do that. When you have the derivative of a product, you need, you need to use the product rule to evaluate it. Okay, so let me look at one last rule for today. Suppose that I want to take the derivative of the quotient of two functions. What is this? Well, again, you may be tempted to say that this is going to be the quotient of the derivatives. Right. That makes sense but just as for the product of two functions, this is wrong. This is totally, absolutely wrong. Never ever do that. It is certainly not true that the derivative of a quotient is the quotient of derivatives. What you need to use is what's called the quotient rule. All right, so what is the quotient rule? Well, it's a complicated statement. What it says is that the derivative of the quotient of two functions is equal to complicated expression, starts with the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, and the whole thing is over the square of the denominator. So it's a pretty complicated looking formula, but it's very important that you remember it because you're going to use it a lot, and it's easy to make mistakes with the sign and the order and so on. So there's a neat little song that can help you remember it. So it goes as follows. Low d high minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. So what does that mean? Well, low is the denominator. d take the derivative high, numerator, minus high d low. Draw the line and square below. All right, you don't need to learn the song if you don't like it, but I find it very useful myself to remember this rule. Now, as far as the proof goes, uh, it is a very interesting proof, but it's quite similar to the product rule, which I will do next. So if you are interested, uh, I will not do it in this video, but you can look at it in the textbook. And in fact, one thing that is interesting as well that we will see shortly is that the quotient rule is not independent from the product rule. In fact, if you know the product rule, and if you know another rule that is called the chain rule that we will see shortly, then together these imply uh, the quotient rule. So that's just an interesting fact that we will see once we learn about the chain rule. All right, but let me just apply the quotient rule to an example, see how it goes. So suppose that I want to evaluate the derivative of, say, um, x squared over x plus 1. What is this? Well, let's just use the formula. Low, so that's x plus 1, d i minus i d low, draw the line, and square below. That's what the quotient rule says. All I have to do now is evaluate derivatives. So I get x plus 1 times the derivative of x squared by the power rule, I get 2x minus x squared. Here I just use the sum rule and then the power rule to get 1 plus 0, whole thing over x1 plus 1 squared. And then I will leave it as an exercise to simplify this expression. This is not very complicated. So the last thing I want to do in this video is prove the product rule. So it's a really cute little proof, and it shows you how you can prove differentiation rules from the definition of derivatives. So it's, you know, it's neat. So let's just do it. Let me just first recall what the product rule is. So this is the 
saying that the derivative of the product of two functions is equal to the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. All right, so how can I prove that? Well, let's do it step by step. So to start the proof, I'm going to define a new function that I'll call capital H of x, which will just be the product of two functions. What I'm interested in now is to calculate the derivative of that new function, capital H of x. And to do that, I'll start by using the definition of derivative. So this will be the limit of the difference quotient. And if I substitute the definition of capital H here, what I get is the first term is actually f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x, the whole thing divided by h. And the next step is the interesting one. So what I'll do is the following. So I, I write the first term first, and then I'm going to add and subtract the same term. So I'm going to subtract first f of x plus h times g of x. Then I'm going to add the exact same term. So of course I'm not changing anything here because I'm subtracting and adding the same term. So it looks like I'm doing something stupid. But we'll see that this is actually really clever. All right, so this is obviously the same expression as before. I haven't changed anything. But now we can simplify this a little bit. So in the first two terms, I can factor out the f of x plus h, right? So I get f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus g of x. And in the last two terms, I can factor out the g of x. Then I get f of x plus h minus f of x. And the whole thing is again divided by h. All right, this is getting nicer and nicer. Now I can use the limit laws. I want to evaluate the limits. I'm going to use the limit laws. First, this is a sum of two terms. So this is going to be the limit of the sum is going to be the sum of the limits. So let me first write this down. I really want to do it step by step. Then I get g of x plus h minus g of x over h. That's my first term. Second term will be the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x times f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And then I can use the limit laws again. This is limited, the limit of a product of two functions. So I can uh, evaluate this by saying that I get the product of the limits. So I'll get first the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h times the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. And same thing for the second term. I have a limit of product. This is the product of the limits. Okay, and then I can finally evaluate the limits. Well, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h is really just f of x. The limit here, well, if you look at that, this is actually exactly the definition of the derivative of g of x. So I get this is equal to the derivative of g of x. For the second term, the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x, well, g of x doesn't depend on h. So that's obviously just g of x. And the last part here is exactly the definition of the derivative of f of x. Boom! This is exactly the product rule. So in mathematics, when we prove a theorem, so a theorem is just a very fancy name for saying a claim or something you want to prove. And at the end, we like to put a little square here, which is just a fancy way that mathematicians have to write down a smiley face because you're happy you finished the proof.